a movie you know hasn't gotten really the right uh, distribution? Oh, certainly, certainly. It's, uh, it's a point of pride to uh, be able to connect audiences with a film that we think is a gem Under that has not deserved the recognition uh, warranted. Uh, so yes, a number of the films we're screening are films that are made by, uh, you know, first-time feature or short film maker. Uh, we have a number of films. Uh, we have a, a, a number of films that are U.S. premieres, and we have at least one film that's a world premiere. It's called Hymen. From where? Egypt. <laughs> what is it about? Are you guys feeling guilty or something? <laughs> we're making up for years past. <laughs> so, well, we know. Uh, you know, uh, that uh, the feature film that we're going to see a clip now, uh, Garbage Dreams. And I just so happened to be in Egypt uh, last month uh, with uh, the News Hour crew. We're doing a story also about the you know, Garbage City. It was almost, I, did, I didn't run into that movie. I mean, it's interesting enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't want my research. Mm -hmm. I didn't run into that movie before even I go. I think it will be very enlightening mm -hmm. for me because... Tell us a little bit why, why this film is really, you know, kind of, uh, kind of uh, almost feature film for the, uh, as you do in your selection, your pick today. Oh, we were, we were smacked and smitten by it. We, all of us were just in awe. It's a documentary. Uh, when we watched it. it. It may well be the best documentary film that we have ever previewed for the Arab Film Festival in six editions. Why is that? Okay, uh, for a number of reasons. It, uh, I was, I was going to actually make these remarks at the, uh, the film festival's introduction, during my, inter film festival my introductory audience. speech. But Nobody in <laughs> my audience is going to go, so don't worry. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to repeat them, and I don't think that, um, I think that they, um, I'm, 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 I'm confident that uh, 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 my words describe the film again, uh, properly and give it its due. In saying that, uh, the film is more than just startlingly, alarmingly informative uh, about a people who uh, live the kinds of lives that most of us would think hellish, would think uh, would, would, would rid us of our, would, would strip away our humanity, mm -hmm. and yet. They, they exude the kind of humanity that humbles you as a bourgeois person as I am. So it starts doing that. I think on that merit alone, handling that material well would have probably got the film into our film festival. Mm -hmm. But then there's more. About, um, about a third or half of way through, uh, a, a sort of a, a, a real life plot twist is introduced, namely, that the Egyptian government, seemingly embarrassed by years of not having actuated a waste management system in Cairo, which is how the Zebelin had managed to earn their livelihood for uh, a few decades, yeah. decided that they were going to uh, put on a good face for the world community and instate a waste management system. Uh, so uh, in order to perform this act with the kind of um, how shall I say, regard or uh, approval that it sought, uh, that it sought out in, in um, enacting this, this, uh, this, this new uh, policy, they sought out multinational companies to come in and dispose of the garbage. Mm -hmm. So collect they hired to, to collect, to collect and dispose of, yeah. including companies from um, Italy and Spain. Mm -hmm. These came in, hired locals indeed, but they're being paid by, um, by the Egyptian government, and one wonders if there are certain kickback interests. Uh, in any case, they collect the rubbish and recycle perhaps about 20% of it, whereas the Zebelin had been recycling 80% of the rubbish they'd collected, Un unmatched that, that, percentage. That, well, that's, that's fine, but what I'm saying from, from Cin artistic, cinematic... Let me continue, let me continue. Okay. So, that, so that, this matter of these people's livelihood being threatened, being threatened injects the film with a, a dramatic interest. 
then now it's a dramatic story also. There is suspense in that, I wonder what's going to happen to them. I see. Will they manage to survive? That carries you through the rest of the picture. All the while, the film is delivered with uh, 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 imagery that is startlingly, hauntingly... She's a photographer. Right? She's a cinematographer by yeah, trade. Yeah. Maya uh -huh. um, Eye-catching. I mean, it's uh, the opening shot. You are there when you see saw those pictures. And it's just... Uh, the muqaddam, the, the isn't that what it's called? Neighborhood itself. Muqaddam. Muqaddam is, is a character. Uh -huh. In the film, just like the people. Really? It looks like something... Interesting, because this is true of three people. It's the right? story, and that's but another thing. It's also the story of these three person. teenagers and their kind of coming of age. Yeah. So it delivers so much more than you would typically expect from a human interest documentary. What, what is this romanticism, or this romantic way of looking at garbage? Of stress? You know, we saw this slum dog uh, millionaire and mm -hmm. also the same you know almost the same talking about hardship of people living and trash and all that uh, you saw the slum dog uh, mm -hmm, i have and uh, is this like a kind of a, a bourgeois middle class kind of romanticized reality of poverty and all that feeling good about yourself we come across such documentaries that hint to you one to the discerning viewer that the filmmaker is essentially exploiting yeah. the subjects, you know, uh, realizing that there are people with the uh, leisure uh, and the uh, income to take the time to go to a cinema and watch a film about people struggling, yeah. uh, realizing that uh, such filmmakers decide to make a film about uh, you know, would be uh, or struggling people uh, so as to uh, uh, deliver such stories to consuming first world, if you will, bougie adults and uh, in the process developing their own reputation and earning a living possibly yeah, uh -huh. out of it. That is not something we sensed here. May Iskandar had gone to Egypt to work. Uh, uh, as a volunteer uh, um, in, or rather she went to Egypt and then she volunteered in the Zebalin uh, community and at that time I think she connected with members of the community and began to take footage and didn't do it for two or three months or four months. She shot the film over four years. Oh, really? And if you watch uh, segments of her engagements on, on YouTube, for well, example. let's do that then. Just, let me just mention about YouTube. Okay. If you watch those, you will, you'll notice that she's really versed in matters related to recycling. It's a priority to her that the film serve uh, you know, uh, uh, our knowledge and our... Is there a setup for that clip? Well, it's the trailer. So, it's so a, I, think it's it's, a, I think it's a, a, it's a bit a of everything. Collage. I think it's a collage okay, of everything. Well, okay, Michelle, let's see that uh, clip and then we'll comment about it. Thank you.